He, like us, is of the earth he treads, the food and water that sustain him, and of the air he breathes. Already he has learnt not to cast his waste upon the earth he lives by, to keep his food and water sweet and clean. Two of three great lessons he has learnt, but what of the air that is life itself? Heaven help the doctor on a night like this. As a medical officer of health, I don't work in a hospital, but just the same, I know what it's like when the bells begin to ring. Have you a bed? Have you another? And you'll probably end up lining the corridors with them. What can you do when the records and experience tell you that the city's death rate is about to jump by perhaps 4,000. That ambulance you saw wasn't coming from an accident. Let's be kind and call it manslaughter. Or if you like, murder. We haven't caught the culprit, though we know him well. Between us, we created him. For a smoke fog like a London pea super is only a dramatic upshoot of a process that's going on all the time. For this patient, We'll call it heart failure or acute bronchitis. What we know quite well is that if it weren't for the smoke-laden fog outside, he'd be on his feet at this moment. As it is, in a week, he'll be dead. If you looked at his X-ray, you'd see plenty. We don't know exactly what it is in smoke pollution that does it. Probably several elements combined. But we do know the results. And we know that the number of deaths from pulmonary and heart disease increases in proportion to an increase in density and duration of smoke fog. Or go up to the PET lab and ask them to show you some sections of lung. You don't have to be a doctor to tell which is the one. My colleagues in hospital deal with results. I with causes. And the basis of my whole professional outlook is one word. Prevention. We've learned a lot. We don't have children with plague or rickets, as we did. We give them all the good old supplementaries, as we call them. Artificial sunlight, orange juice. Supplementaries. It's a significant word. It seems to imply that something's missing. Which it is. Vitamin D. The thing that natural sunlight forms under the skin with a substance nature put there. If you can't see the sun for smoke, then science has to help. We'll see to it that he survives. We'll purify his milk, pump orange juice into him, and put him under a sun lamp. We can't always guarantee him sunshine. But there's plenty we could do about this. Two proverbs occur to me when I look at a modern industrial city. Where the sun enters, the doctor doesn't. And the funeral coach comes twice as often to the shady side of the street. We spend millions on sewers and practically nothing on that aerial slum up there. We'll spend thousands on a building, dirty it, then wash it, till it stands out, as someone said, like a bride at a funeral. Smoke is subtle, and that's its danger. It reduces working capacity, increases fatigue, it kills all beauty and takes away the spirit. And any doctor will tell you that spirit is health. Yes, to produce this thing that kills all beauty, health and spirit, 
We don't use some devil's brew, but valuable ingredients from our most precious mineral, coal. We don't brew it in some devil's kitchen either. We do it in our own. Here is the main source of atmospheric pollution, producing more smoke per ton than any other appliance in use, worse than industry. Yet we fling it on our fires, send most of its value up the chimney and never count the cost, for that is all around us. Smoke, like all evils, comes home to roost. Yes, what goes up must come down. Unfortunately, this comes down on our lungs and on our curtains. One of its ingredients is sulfur dioxide. This combines readily with the water in the atmosphere to form about 9 million tons of sulfurous acid each year. Nice stuff. Here's what it does to a piece of cloth. We build many of our public buildings with this. Limestone. Sulfurous acid reacts with the limestone. Expansion takes place and chunks of stone weighing tons are forced off. But you'll say I'm exaggerating about the acid. If you doubt what happens outside, look at this. Metalwork taken from different areas after being exposed to ordinary atmospheric conditions. Here's an ordinary wire cage taken off a vent pipe. Not much substance left there, is there? Or oh, look at these photographs. Here are the Houses of Parliament showing examples of the fabric before and after renovation. These are national examples, but evidence of this kind of insidious attack can be found in any industrial city. Next time you're down the embankment, take a look at Cleopatra's Needle. Fifty years in London's done more damage than 3,000 in Egypt. Don't think you're safe in a country area either. Air pollution test stations up and down the country prove otherwise. It's all a question of degree. Here's the type of apparatus we use. It's basically simple enough. A filter paper is placed inside.